Hey, what's happening guys? Hope you guys have a great day today. Just want to talk to you a little bit about CO2 pressure, uh, CO2 bottles and how I have the wastegate, how I have boost control on my vehicle. And there's a lot of race cars that do it like this. Uh, a lot of street cars do it a little bit differently. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can control boost. But um, ideally uh, for me, the best thing is with a CO2 bottle. So check this out. Here's my CO2 setup. It's a five pound CO2 bottle. Um, got a, a regulator on it. The first gauge over there, the tall one, just tells you the bottle pressure. Um, the second gauge over here closest uh, to the left, that's going to tell you actually the pressure going. And so I just went ahead and run a five pound bottle. Um, typically the five pound bottle will, will last about a half a season. It depends on completely how you have your boost set up uh, in the holly. Mine comes on and pretty much stays on all the time. And then when I hit the trans brake, it cycles back down. Um, but you can do it a different way. So in the holly, this is kind of how you can control how much CO2 you're using. This TPS boost modulation. If you have this little valve right here, this little box right here checked, what's going to happen is until you reach 50% throttle, you're going to have no CO2 pressure on top of the, the gate. And so, and that's adjustable. It can go 80% or 90%. It will go to 100%. So here, but here's the, here's the problem that I found with the TPS boost modulation is when this thing is selected, it is not 100% all or nothing. So at 50% throttle, it doesn't give you all of the CO2 pressure that you're asking it to give. It's a ramp. So if you're going down track and you're at 100% throttle, and then for some reason your foot start, starts easing off the gas, it will start losing dome pressure. And so, you know, that's pretty problematic. It's going to drop. The good thing about this scenario is this this would be good for the street. This would be really good um, to conserve CO2. But for my car, what I do is I just do not have this selected. And so with that not selected, basically anytime I turn on the ignition, the solenoid cycle, and it puts whatever the dome pressure is, it goes through the cycle, and it puts the dome pressure on there. And so it follows the ramp out, and then, you know, it is there. And so like this one, it starts off at 10 PSI, and then at... 25 PSI at two seconds. So basically it'll just have 25 pounds of dome pressure at all times. Um, as long as my quarter turn valve is turned on at the uh, bottle. So that's the way I do mine. You know, you, it does I, at the end of the pass, I'll turn the quarter turn valve off and you know, that's the way I conserve. But um, you know, it does potentially use a little bit more CO2. Anytime you hit the trans brake, it will go to my launch enabled. So it leaves with 10 PSI. And then I've got, you know, 5 PSI on the, the old crap button. So that's my scramble button. But it's going to, um, you know, that's that's the way I, I set mine up and use mine. That's why I have this quarter turn valve here. So I leave the, the, the bottle turned on all the time. And then before I make a pass, you know, I'll, I'll turn that valve. And there's been a couple times um, what I've recently started doing. I used to just turn it on when I got into staging lanes. But what I found is doing burnouts, it was hard to control the boost. The boost would, you know, run away and it would make 10 pounds of boost in the burnout box. So I started turning that valve off and it's beat me a couple times to where I forgot to turn it back on and then it doesn't have any CO2 going down track. So that's the problem with doing it that way. But that's what the quarter uh, turn valve is for. So then it comes down, it follows down. Here are my, my solenoids. Essentially what happens, and you see the T, the T there, that line, uh, the black line, it goes back to the parachute. So I have a, a, a air controlled parachute, still pull the, the lever like normal, but the air solenoid pushes it out a lot faster, a little easier to pack. But it comes down, it goes into the solenoid, regular uh, 6JJ52 valves. But the one on the right is the fill solenoid. Uh, you got the T coming through in the middle. Um, the one on the left is the vent. So those work in conjunction together and then the black line going out, that's the one that goes up to the, to the front of the car and goes to the waste gates. So when you have a preset pressure, the valve on the right, the fuel solenoid opens and then it should open slowly and it progresses it and then it gets to the, the pressure that you want it to be. And then if it overpressurizes, then the, fuel, the, the dump solenoid dumps a little bit of pressure. And so you'll hear it clicking back and forth. And so that's how these work. So what will happen, I got the pressure gate just turned on. It's got about 85 pounds of pressure on the, the valve going on there. This is turned on and then it goes down to the solenoids. Comes on, 
it will pulse from the fill side to the to the dump side and that's how it maintains the co2 pressure co2 pressure goes down that line then it goes up to the top of the wastegate essentially what happens is you're making it appear that you have a varying rate spring in the wastegate so when you put say 40 pounds of dome pressure on it you've got a real light spring in the wastegate i run starter solenoid springs off of uh, a small block chevrolet starter so i mean you know it's one of those things that you want as light as a spring as possible some people don't even run springs in them they just let the co2 do all the work another thing to think about co2 pressure does not always 100 percent follow boost one to one so you may have to put 50 pounds of dome pressure on the, the waste gates in order to get it to make 20 pounds of boost or 25 pounds of boost sometimes it does follow one to one and if you've got 40 pounds of dome pressure you will have about 40 pounds of boost what seems to be happening is that's another indication of how your turbo is doing once you get to a point where it's close to one to one and then suddenly you have to start adding five or ten pounds of dome pressure to pick up one pound of boost if you'll go back and look at your back pressure most likely your back pressure is starting to increase as well and so that's the indication you've almost run out of turbo so it doesn't always follow it it would be nice if it did follow it one to one all the time but it doesn't it completely depends on your setup it depends on how everything is matched together so the CO2 pressure comes down. I've got two wastegates. So on mine, it goes to the top of this wastegate and then to the top of this wastegate. And then this is the, the pressure sensor. So this is the, the transducer that tells the holly how much pressure is actually on the top of the wastegate. The bottom port on the wastegate, this just goes to the compressor housing like normal. So it's able to, to read the boost, get boost acting on, on the lower side, and then you get CO2 pressure acting on this side. And the basics of how the, the CO2 works, um, you know, and you build a ramp. So you tell it you want to start off with 10 or 14 pounds of dome pressure. And then when you let go of the trans brake, it'll ramp up to 40 or 50 or 30, whatever, whatever you choose, how much ever boost you're trying to make. And so it'll follow that ramp and start applying CO2 pressure to the top of the wastegate, and that's how you increase boost. All right, if y'all have any questions, drop them in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Go fast and get some wind lights. Thanks.